Hello. Today I thought I would take some time to talk to you about my favorite Bible, or my favorite Bibles, because I have many. In fact, I collect various editions of, of almost any translation, English translation. I have my peculiarities as far as what I'm looking for, the way a Bible looks. Um, I prefer a single column edition. So the first Bible I began to read after I got saved was the New American Standard Bible. Uh, it is my primary Bible. Now, for those of you familiar with the New American Standard, you know that it's gone through several editions. I have some to take a look at here. These are the ones that I use most often, and this is three different editions. Um, this first one is the 1977 edition. Um, I really, this is my favorite Bible that I own, and the reason this is my favorite Bible is because of the size. This is, as you will see, a single column, side column reference edition with the references on the right, right hand of the page. But the reason I love this Bible is because it's a personal size Bible, but the font in it is still uh, conducive to me being able to read uh, as long as I've got my glasses on. But this is my favorite Bible that I own. It's also the oldest Bible that I own. I bought this Bible uh, back in the 1980s at a Christian bookstore in Vidalia, Georgia when I was attending Bruton Parker College. So it's the oldest Bible I own. I've had older Bibles, older New American Standard Bibles, but uh, I've either lost them or worn them out. Uh, then there's the 1995 edition, which is one that I still use. Um, it's marked and highlighted all the way through, and it sometimes has become my preaching Bible because the text in it's a little larger. And this is one of the 2020 editions of the New American Standard Bible. I, I like it. Uh, I like some of the revisions. One of the things that you need to know is that I, I'm not really happy with any translation. The more you understand the, the translation process and when you become a little knowledgeable in the ancient languages, you begin to become aware of how limited translations can be. Uh, but even so, I like the revisions in this. But this Bible is just a little too big and bulky for to, to carry around. Now, for you King James lovers, I do want to point out that I still read the King James Bible. I have this New Cambridge Paragraph Bible. It's a King James. And it is also a single column edition. And so when I want to read King James, uh, this is the one I go to. Um, recently... Um, when the uh, Lachlan Foundation updated the New American Standard to the uh, 2020 edition, uh, many people were not happy with that because they saw the 95 edition as superior in almost every way. And um, the Legacy Standard Bible was uh, produced and it's published by 316 Publishing and it is a revision of the 95 edition of the New American Standard. I really like this Bible. Um, I like it better in many ways than the 2020 New American Standard. Uh, it, it tends to maintain the more literal translations. Um, uh, one of the main reasons I like it is because it uh, consistently translates the name of God, Yahweh, um, throughout the Old Testament. There are a few places, a uh, few criticisms that I have of it, but if you're looking for a, a new translation, this also is a side column reference, so if you're looking for a new translation, um, you can get the Legacy Standard Bible. Now, those who have taken my classes and anyone who's had a conversation with me about Bibles knows that I advise people don't use study Bibles. Study Bibles are for lazy people. Um, and preachers should never be lazy. So I don't like study Bibles. I don't like the Dakes Annotated Bible for several reasons. Um, I just don't like study Bibles. Uh, the problem is that when you have study notes in a side column of a text, uh, many readers don't understand that the sacred text is divinely inspired, but the notes are not. And, uh, and the other thing is that too many people use a study Bible for the singular source of extra biblical study. I would point out that any Bible dictionary, any good Bible dictionary, will give you more information on a topic than any study Bible will. And for an extra 20 or $30, you can pick up a really good Bible dictionary, and that alongside with your favorite translation will be all you really need for basic Bible study. So, you know, to me, a study Bible is more or less a, a lazy way of doing uh, scripture study, um, but it's also a very limited way. Now, I'm going to make one exception to that. The NET Bible, the New English Translation Bible. 
Uh, I like the translation. It's more of a dynamic equivalent than, than a, more of a literal translation, but it's, it's a really good translation. But the reason that I love the NET Bible is because of its notes. Thousands and thousands and thousands of notes. Notes on uh, why certain words were translated the way they were. Commentary on a scripture. I mean, just really, really uh, insightful notes. This Always read the introductions to your Bible. Every new Bible translation has a significant introduction explaining the translation methods, the translation protocols, the translation philosophies, uh, how to read the Bible. Read the introduction to your Bible. The introduction will give you a lot of insight as to how to go forward. God bless you.